Hello, hello guys. How are y'all? I am Tracy here on my own page. Actually, I'm on my own page. Um, I'm going to do a live here in my kitchen doing a project right behind me, but I am actually here representing Would You Bend Moldings. Um, Sully Joe asked me to jump in at the last second and do a live for them. They are actually hosting um, the World of Chalk Paint group. I don't know if you guys are a member of that, but I do know that we are going to be sharing this live over into the Would You Bend, uh, no, I'm sorry, into the World of Chalk Paint group. Um, if you're not a member of that, you really do need to check out that group. They have a lot of fantastic inspiration every single day. And Would You Bend is running that group for them on Facebook this month for the month of February. So we will be doing as Would You Bend ambassadors, Dixie Belle ambassadors, um, some other paint groups, um, probably redesigned with Prima. I'm not sure who, but a lot of people are gonna be using Would You Bend products and doing projects live to show you how easy and fan ticking, fan ticking frabulous or fan freaking tabulous this product is. Hey Katie, how are you doing, hun? So if you know anyone that has contemplated um, doing something special to their pantry door in their kitchen because it's a lot of blank space and it really doesn't go with the rest of my kitchen. Um, I would love it if you guys would share this with someone, tag someone, uh, let them know that I'm gonna take this process on. And I'm also doing it while Matt's out of town, if that tells you anything. I um, We usually kinda go hand in hand with our ideas, um, but I had a feeling this one might be one that he would be opposed to um, and I don't usually do things behind his back, but I really, really, really want to do this. <laughs> and actually, Zadie's here listening to me right now, which is, I'm not setting a good example, Zadie, sorry, but I'm doing something behind Dan's back. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, let me tell you what I'm going to do. Hi, Rima and Nancy. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, so I'm in my kitchen. Okay, so y'all know that I just painted my kitchen, right? Y'all know that. So, I painted my uppers. I painted them in sawmill gravy. I painted my lowers down there in caviar. Hello, Sally. Hi there. Um, and now I have been wanting to do something with this right here. And I actually wanted to do it long before Would You Bend came along. That door and this door, which actually goes out into my laundry room and into my garage, which is my shop. So I see this space a lot. And from the end of my kitchen, which is a galley kitchen, you look straight into this door. And from my office, which is behind y'all, I literally look straight into this door all the time. And I just would like them to be a little cooler and a little more fun like the rest of the house. So um, thank you, Katie. Thank you. So here we go. Um, Sully, by the way, Cheryl with CC Restyled has uh, the flu. So that's who y'all were expecting to be on here today. And I'm so sorry you get me, but um, Cheryl is down for the count with the flu. I feel really bad for her. I hope she feels better soon. I know she's got like four kids and it sucks to be a mom and run a business and have a shop and uh, have a bunch of kids and be sick. So I hope she gets better soon. Um, thank you, Paula. Um, anyway, so I jumped in and said, okay, fine, I'm gonna do my door. So here I am. The lighting is a little weird today. I'm not real sure why. Um, maybe because I'm tucked in a corner. I don't know. It seems a little off. Uh, but anyway, let's get going. So what I've done is I went ahead and I drew out what I wanted to do. So I did not turn my phone this way where you guys could see it like up and down. You do, Jan. It's terrible. I've never done this before. Um, but I thought you could see it up and down, but it doesn't show as well on Facebook. So I decided to just go sideways with it and I'll just take you up and I'll take you down with me. But our main focus right now is gonna be about right here, and that's what's important. You guys can see that. Um, I knew that, okay, here is what I have. I have a little bucket with my Would You Bend moldings in it. I keep them in here, um, the ones that I have available. Every one of the moldings that I have available, I am a Dixie Bell brand ambassador, and I'm also a Would You Bend brand ambassador. So um, I have whatever Dixie Bell carries on their page. So anything that I'm gonna use today is available right now on the Dixie Bell page, and I put my link at the top of this. So if you're inspired to try this on your door or a wall panel at home or the side of a dresser, um, these exact products are available. So I keep them in this box. 
Um, and I had several that I could choose from. I had several different types of trim. I'm gonna be using some of the, the trim like this. Um, I had several different kinds. I had some very, very ornate, thin type. This is more of like a band. It's like a flat band almost, but it's got an ivy trim on it. That was a little, uh, a little too fancy for my sad little 1960s kitchen. Um, and I had some roses and stuff, and I had some of uh, some of these like I used on my gumball machine. Um, and I also, I love these. I'm waiting to use these on something. Um, I used these on a guitar case, actually, recently. So, I went ahead and went with this crown that I love. And let me show you what I ended up deciding on. So, I ended up deciding on using this one right here. Oh, Kim, were you telling me a disaster about... Uh, <laughs> It was something well, so I think Matt will like it, but I'm gonna need to have like the whole thing done because it's gonna be a little bit of a hot mess for a while because I don't have enough trim to finish this project. I'm only doing it right now because Sully was in a like, help, can someone do a live? So I'm gonna have half of a project for quite a while until I get some more trim so I can finish it out. And thank you, I, the gumball machine. I got uh, several orders for that gumball machine. That was a lot of fun. So I'm gonna do this on the top. So what I did was I just held all the different pieces. I stood back and I just kind of held them up to look and see what I liked, what I didn't like, all right? And here I go again using the same piece that I keep using. It is my my favorite piece, really, that um, we have on the Dixie Bell Would You Been um, sales page. So what I did is I just kind of held it up and decided where I wanted it. Um, and what I like about these projects is that when you hold it in place, you know that you're usually you glue these down before you do any painting. You go ahead and just glue them down and then you start painting your project because you want to, you want to start painting over this and the piece that you're putting it on because you want it to look like it was all together. You don't want this to look like it was an add on later. Does that make sense? Um, to me, it just looks a lot better if you encompass the whole thing with paint, both this and this, and then go back and highlight or paint your, your Would You Been trim after the fact. So when you do that, you can glue this in place, but you can hold it up and you can trace around it. So I've traced around the top of it and I traced around the outside edges of it. That way, when I remove it, I kind of can see where I'm gonna put it. And then I was able to, to measure out the rest of the space without it being up there. Does that make sense? These I'm gonna do on the bottom. So let me take you down here so that you can see the bottom. I'm just gonna angle this down like this. Um, I am not gonna go all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna end this about right here. Um, and I just eyeballed it, y'all. I eyeballed it. Now I measured my sides, obviously, but I, I wanted the top and the bottom to just be what looked good to my eye. So I'm gonna use these on the corners. These are gonna be my corner pieces here and on this side as well. So I went ahead and measured them out from the floor up to make sure that they were even, and I did exactly like I just told you. I, I held it in place, I traced around it with a pencil, and I could move it, same thing over here, traced around it with a pencil, and I was able to move it. So then I set those aside. Then I took a measuring stick, and I decided about how far in I wanted this, about three and a half inches from each side. And I just measured three and a half inches, three and a half inches all the way up. I just kept going up the door like that, three and a half inches in. And I made like a little hash mark all the way up to the top. Um, and then I did that down both sides. Then I took my measuring stick and I held it up from the top hash mark all the way across all the rest of the hash marks. And I took my pencil and I drew a line down down to the bottom of the fancy trim that's down on the corner. Did the same thing on this side, three and a half inches in from the top all the way down and drew it in. So now I have like a centered in panel. I've made a, a panel. So it's actually gonna look like a recessed panel there. Um, hi Tracy from Frankfurt, Germany. Hi there, good to see you. We are on such different time, in such different time zones. I'm glad that, um, that you are here with us today. Thank you for watching. Yes, Sully, I'm just an eyeball girl. I mean, I had to break this out because I needed it to make sure I had a straight line. <laughs> and I did feel like I needed to measure in because I didn't want my side panelings to look like that. Um, but I just kind of eyeballed where I wanted the crown and where I wanted my base sides, okay? So it's all drawn out. I don't know if y'all can see that very well. 
But other than that, all you need is these other two tools. You either need a set of scissors, a pair of scissors or a knife. And this is just a kitchen knife because this trim is so easy to cut. You can just snip it, you can cut it, you soften it with a heat gun. Um, I'm sure you guys have already been seeing people actually apply these. I am not an expert, which is why watching this, oh, Vicki, I'm so glad. This is why watching this is good because I'm not, Sully Joe. she's the, the creative genius behind this product. She's an expert. The girl has used this stuff, you know, uh, thousands of times and so you watch it and I know you're probably like well is it really that easy okay I'm here to tell you it really is because I'm not an expert this is my one two three four this is only my fifth project with this product okay so I'm still a beginner and I'm gonna do it live with you here right here at the drop of a hat so it really is easy to use so you just need something to cut it with you need a heat gun or a blow dryer or something to apply heat. Blow dryers work, heat guns are even better. Um, and then like last week or two weeks ago when I did my live with the guitar case, I had like a, um, you know, like an electric plate, an electric skillet type thing plugged in and I kept my little trim sitting in that. So when I picked my trim up, it was already loosey goosey and it wasn't, you know, rigid and hard. So, um, hello Melody from Hot Tin Roof, Georgia. Hot Tim Roof, is that the name of a store? Surely that's the name of a store. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Are you serious? Um, okay, so that's really all you need. And then you need some glue. Um, <clears throat> I use uh, multiple things. It depends on what I'm working on. Last week when I did the guitar case, that's a leather guitar case. I didn't, I wasn't sure about the type on wood glue because I wasn't going on wood. So I like to use E6000, I've used it for years, and so I used E6000 with a do dollop of hot glue along the way because I was working on a vertical project. So when you're working on a project that's up and down, if you use like Titebond or something like this, sometimes they still want to slide just a little bit. I don't wanna keep having to go back and check to see if my, my molding is sliding. So I just use a drop of hot glue on a couple different places and it just serves as an anchor. It just hold. I know that, I mean, hot glue's instant, hot glue's instant. so it's gonna hold it in place. While the wood glue takes shape, it lets me let go and then I can heat it, reheat it after you glue it down and that really, this heat gun applied to it after you've put the glue on and you put it on your project, it just makes it suck up to the project. I mean, it just dries it out. It shrinks that mold up against the project. All of the glue, you just watch it just sort of naturally presses out. There's no bubbles. There's no gaping holes. You don't have to fill it in with a wood filler or anything like that. It, it goes flat to your project, okay? Um, so this is a flat project. But what's beautiful about what I just told you is if you're working on a curved project or a rounded project, it does the same thing. You heat it, you press it to that rounded curve with your hands or whatever you're working on, and it just flattens right out and it is not going to come off. So, um, okay, so let's get going. Um, let's, get, uh, let's get the crown on the top first. I'm going to go ahead and get this glued on first. No matter what, even though this door is flat and this looks flat, right? It looks flat. Even though it looks flat, um, Sully Joe really, really, really encourages you to heat this up before you put it on. Heat it up first a little bit, put your glue on, and then put it on your project and reheat it again, okay? So I'm gonna do that real quick. I've got glue down there and a little bit of hot glue. I'm gonna heat this up just a little bit. You can put your glue on first if you want to do that as well. I'm going to put my wood glue on. Hello from Illinois, Tracy. Hi, hun. Patricia from Italy. Oh, this just came flying out. So I'm going to just use my finger here. Um, a lot of people are super fancy and they use cute little brushes and uh, paint it on so nice and neat and I don't. Um, I just use my finger. And when I use E6000, I don't even do that. Look, that's kind of leaking through a little bit. Tight bond does dry pretty quickly and it's super easy to apply. And then like I said, I'll just put a few little dabbles of hot glue on here as well. Oh, I guess y'all need to see what I'm doing. 
That's more important, right, than seeing my face. <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't believe we've got somebody on here from Italy and Germany. Usually we've got some Australians on here as well. All right, so there we go. I'm all glued up. Here's my hot glue gun. All I'm gonna do is just put like a little drop down here on one end, one right up here in the middle, one over here, maybe one right there. That's probably overkill, but it's what I like to do. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna take this straight up here to the top. I'm gonna put it in place where I've already traced it out. Okay, it's getting real, guys. This is getting real. I'm in trouble now, right? Because here it is. It's glued on. Matt doesn't know about it. <laughs> this is really happening, really happening. Now, I will tell you that if it's got a lot of holes in it, like this piece right here, it is a little bit helpful. Let me go get a paper towel. It is helpful if you have a Q-tip nearby. I forgot that, I don't have one in here. If you have a Q-tip nearby, you can kind of put that into these holes and absorb some of this excess glue. Okay, so here we go. Now I'm gonna heat it up because I wanna make sure that it is nice and flat. I do not want any gaps. And this is what's gonna really secure it. As it gets hot, I'm gonna put some pressure on it and we're gonna glue it into place, flat. It won't need any wood filler. And it dries, it gets pretty tight really fast. And I can already, as I start to press it, I can see it bend. I can see that it wants to really grab hold of the door. I'm just being extra careful right now, but I mean, it's already on. It's on there for good. It's on there flat and it's not going anywhere. All right, so now the beauty of this product to you guys is this is a much easier project other than having to measure ahead of time and know exactly what you're doing. Um, where did I get the glue gun? Oh, okay, so I need it. So this glue gun, guys, it's just a cordless one. I got it at Hobby Lobby. And this wall color, by the way, thank you, it's a gray by Sherwin-Williams and it's called uh, uh, mindful gray, mindful gray, and it's in my entire house. It's my whole house. The door here is probably going to be in sawmill gravy. I'm just scraping a little bit of this extra glue that I don't want. You can use, like I said, if you have a Q-tip, but I don't want to leave y'all and go get a Q-tip. All right, so that is on there. So now let's go ahead and start with our trim. I'm gonna go ahead and start with our trim work. Um, let's see here, she's answering. Can you use this on glass? Yes, JC, so if you go to uh, my website, tracysfancy.com, tracysfancy.com, T-R-A-C-E-Y-S-F-A-N-C-Y.com. Um, if you go to my website and it'll, it'll open up on the top, I think it's the top left, there's a search bar type in the search bar gumball machine and the gumball machine blog. I wrote an entire blog, how to do it, every project I use, every single uh, order number that you need to know um, of your wood you bin moldings. And the gumball machine has the traditional glass globe on it. And I, it, I did it with E6000. It glued on beautifully. It's my granddaughter's and it's uh, still standing and in great shape. It's beautiful. Um, Okay, any other questions here? Uh, yay, hi from Mossy, where'd you get the glue gun? Y'all are asking Hobby Lobby. All right, all right, so now I've got, I don't know what number this is. Sully, if you're watching and you know, I don't know what number this is, but it looks like, it literally looks like a rope. It looks like cording, kind of like cording. It does, Jill, I love it. It's in my whole house from Croatia. This is so exciting. Um, okay, so that's what it looks like. It kind of looks like cording. I call it just rope. It's just the rope. It's one of my favorite ones that they have. All right, so I'm going to heat this up a little bit because it's tight. 
Okay, oh, this one is, she's given the number to this. This is T-R-O-O-9, all right? Um, 46, Tracy, what are you answering 46 for? Let's see. <laughs> I don't know what Tracy's answering. I love you, Tracy. I have no idea what, what you're answering. Um. Oh, see, she's saying the number. Look at her. Look at her. She's saying it's TR46. Okay. All right. So, you know what? I don't know that either, Frosty. I'm so glad Sully's on here. How much is in one roll? This one has not been used. I don't know how much is in. Yeah, this is the... <laughs> okay, just answer me uh, how long this is. How, how many yards or feet are in one, one roll? So if you let, if I let go of this, here's the end of it. It's hard, it's stiff, okay? If I were to pull this off, it's gonna pop. It would pop and break, which is okay because they, you just heat them up and you can just mash them right back together. You can glue them together. Tracy, you're amazing, thank you. It's 82 inches, thank you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and heat this up. I'm gonna get at least one end in place over here. Um, what I want to do with y'all on camera is I want to take you around the corner. That's what I want to do. So we're going to start this right up against that crown and then I want to head head over horizontally and then make the the 90 degree turn at the corner. And so y'all can see how easy it is just to bend and to mold any direction that you want. So I'm just heating it now making it soft and watch what's happening. Look at that. A minute ago, it would have broken, right? And now, now it's getting soft. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put a, I'm going to put a drop of hot glue up here at the top. You don't have to do this, guys. This is just because I'm working on live video and, and also because I'm working um, on a vertical surface. But I just like knowing that I can smash into that. All right, I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna go ahead and unbend this. Put my tight bond glue on there. There we go. And I'm gonna put this in place right up against that crown. I'm gonna press and hold. We'll heat it up in just a second. I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna heat it up right now because I want this to bend. And I'm gonna make, I'm gonna take it around this corner. It literally is going around the corner for me. It's bending for me. So I'm gonna bend that just like that. I'm gonna hold that in place. And it took the corner for me. All by itself. I'm just removing excess glue. It does not have to be beautiful here. The glue showing, guys, because you know I'm going to paint right over it. Remember, I want this to look like it's on, been on the door and it's a piece of the door. I don't want it to look like I came along. Um, how old is my house? 60-something years later and uh, decided I wanted to put this on my door. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to heat this section up. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and glue I'm gonna add a little bit more glue. I'm just gonna put this in my hand. This is totally, this is totally the way I fly, people. Right here, right here. Look at me. Glue in my hand. Glue in my hand using my finger. But you know what? Things get pretty. Softening it up so I can flatten that out. There we go. Would also help if I had a work table in here right next to me. All right, see how easy that was? Are y'all laughing at me? Hi, Amber, hello. Miss Amber, oh my gosh, Miss Amber sent me the most beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, tutu for my granddaughter. Did y'all see that? Do y'all follow me? I would love to have you guys follow me on Instagram as well um, or on Tracy's Fancy. Facebook, okay, look how good that is. See how nice my corner looks? So I'm gonna keep this up. Uh, I'm gonna turn this here. 
See that got a little got got a little flipped over a little bit. And it's no big deal. Like I said, if it bends or breaks, it repairs easily. You just glue it back together. There we go. It's nice and flat. Again, <laughs> using my human hand palette. Now, do y'all see how awesome this is that I don't, you know, if you do wood molding, you have to have all those tools. Um, you've got to know, you've got to be comfortable using the tools. Um, if you mess up, you sure can't just uh, glue it back in place like this. I'm gonna try to get down to the doorknob with you guys and then I'll go back and reheat. I'm gonna unbend this. Now, do I know what I'm gonna do inside this, this recess panel yet? I don't. I'm gonna be honest and tell y'all that I don't. Um, but y'all will be the first to know on Facebook and if you follow me on my blog or my website, you'll be the first to know. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, we're so gonna be done when I get when I get to this point. So last week when I was doing the guitar stand, the guitar, uh, I think I had to use my feet. <laughs> All right. I'm. I really do want to make sure that this is nice and straight. It's good and straight. Okay, let's see. Would you been as a game changer? Does Matt ever go to work and wonder if he's gonna recognize the house when he gets home? Amber's asking. Um, no, but my ex felt that way. Like my ex-husband from years ago, he definitely felt that way. Matt, we do it together. I mean, he's helped me paint all these walls. He hung my floral wall mural. Um, he helps me with furniture sometimes, so he's usually pretty involved. This, this he's not been involved in. Okay, so that's that. So do you see what I'm doing here? So I'm gonna go ahead and take it all the way down. I'm gonna have a decorative corner down there. I'll take it over another decorative corner and all the way back up. And I might have enough for this project. I actually might, I'm not, I'm not real sure. Um, how long have we been going? 30 minutes? Do you want me to keep going? Do you want me to go to the doorknob? Because I am going to have to make a cut at the doorknob. So, let's see. See what I did? I unplugged my heat gun. So, I'm going to go ahead and some glue. This has gotten really stiff again, so I'm going to go right up in there, being careful not to snap it, being careful not to bend it. There we go, just like that. Going to heat it up. So, did y'all know that Sully Joe and I am going to be doing a workshop together in Florida? We're actually going to the Dixie Bell. Uh, we're actually going to be at the Dixie Bell Conference in Florida, and then we are traveling over to Fort Myers Beach, and we're doing a workshop together there, which I can't wait because I get to meet her in person. Okay, I'm looking, just making sure this is nice and straight, heating it up, Get some good pressure, and we're going to create together. We're going to have such a good time. It's going to be a great time. We're almost to the doorknob. I'm just gonna go ahead and let this roll all the way out and kind of make my tentative cut. Be about right down there. So I'm just gonna use my scissors and make like a tentative cut right here, just like that. 
Now I may need to get a little bit closer than that once I'm once I actually really do get down to the doorknob. And if I do, I'll just kind of chisel it away with a knife a little bit. See how easy that was? <laughs> this is cracking me up. <laughs> cracking me up. I know, and I think Sully and I, we are uh, very similar in the way we just kind of are like crazy in the way we create. I don't think we're like super organized in the creation process, which is crazy because I'm very, very, very organized in my personal life and in my personal space, but when it comes to creating, I'm just a little bit crazy. I just, I got, I just need a little bit more glue. I'm trying to do it before it gets too stiff. And I would say that's it. I think we got it. And I am gonna have to cut that back just a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat it so that I can make that cut. And I'm gonna do it with a knife. Right here, I'm gonna do it at an angle. Perfect, perfect. It's still very, very warm. So let me push down really well. I love it. So what do you think? What do you think, guys? <laughs> Just don't put your hand down anywhere. I don't know what she's talking about. No, not that bad. What are y'all talking about? Oh, getting ready for paint scoring. <laughs> Tracy, I think Tracy's warning me about be, uh, creating with her in person. Okay, so that's the deal, guys. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to let y'all go, and I'm going to go ahead and finish this. I'm gonna finish it off as far as the trim will let me go. I just don't know if I have enough to go up that side, but I'm at least gonna get my bottom quarters on. And um, I would say, I mean, I don't know, maybe in another, if, if I have to wait for trim, it's gonna be a few weeks before you guys, before I can put my finished project up there. Don't y'all love this part? <sighs> Where you start like peeling back the glue, who loves that? <laughs> So, yeah, Terry, I have no idea what I'm going to do in the middle, hun. I really don't. I mean, I have lots of ideas, but I haven't narrowed it down at all. And I really got kind of thrown into this today, and I wasn't planning on doing this. So, I don't. It's, it's a process. All I do know is that I wanted a recessed panel on my door. And then as soon as I get enough product, I'm going to do another one. The same exact design will be on this door. They'll be, they'll be exactly the same. That's what I do know. The door that goes out there, it goes out to my workshop, and I really could do another recess panel exactly the same, but paint it real crazy on the inside and say something like, enter at your own risk <laughs> into the Wonderland or something like that. So anyway, thanks you guys. Um, oh, that's okay, Lynn. Yeah, it's a, we've got about, we're about 35 minutes into it, but I'm gonna head out. Um, thanks again, y'all, for watching. Thank you, Sully, for uh, allowing me to do this. I hope Cheryl is better soon. Um, Sully, I'll see you in just a few weeks, and um, I appreciate all of you being on here and commenting, and um, I hope so, Terry. I hope I don't get in trouble, but you know he's pretty easy, right? So, okay, guys. Well, y'all take care. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.